It didn't come as easy as expected for the Atlanta Braves and Miami over the weekend, but thanks to the heroics of Marcelo Zuna, the Braves do get a series win over the fish. We'll discuss every that everything there that happened over the weekend and get into our minors on Monday on this episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, and welcome into Lockdown Braves, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. Also part of the Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on social media at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you check out the podcast at Lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback you have for the podcast. If you're new and watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on the audio version, appreciate your support as well. If you would, leave me a five-star review. I'd really appreciate it. And thank you so much for your support of Locked On Braves. If you're an everyday, if you're an everydayer, let me know down in the comment section below on YouTube. Would love to hear from you. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors from brakes to exhaust kits and, and beyond. eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. It is our Monday episode, so we're going to recap the series weekend series against the Miami Marlins, and it is also our Miners Monday segment here, so I'll recap everything that happened at the minor league level this past weekend. Talk about the Spencer Strider news. We'll talk, talk about Charlie Morton. My worry meter with him, Marcelo Zuna's hot start. We'll talk about all that on today's podcast. Let's jump into the highlights from the weekend, though. I'm not going to recap game by game, but just want to go over some of the highlights and lowlights from the weekend. And what was a series win against Miami? It was a hard-earned one, as it says in the title. Thought it might be a chance for the Braves to come in here against a struggling Miami team, sweep the series, very least get a series win, which they did. But they really, really had to work on it or work for it with the late comeback in game three on Sunday after blowing them out in game one, getting somewhat blown out in game two. And then, like I said, the comeback in game three, which shouldn't have had to happen. We'll get into all of that. Let's start with the good from the weekend. Going back to Friday night, Max Reed, a couple of rough starts to begin his 2024 season. He gets on track against that Marlins offense, which Came into the weekend, and still, after the weekend, it's one of the worst offenses in baseball, even if it didn't seem like that at times on Saturday and Sunday. So it was a good chance for Max Freed to really kind of get things together, go deep into the game, which he did, pitched into the seventh inning, and kind of get back to the Max Freed that we are used to seeing. And I think we got that on Friday night. Six and a third innings, just four hits allowed, one walk, only one earned run, four strikeouts, in 84 pitches, a 77.3 mile per hour average exit velocity against only four hard hits allowed. That's Max Freed. That's what we have come to expect from Max Freed, somebody that's going to give you length, somebody that's going to get up a lot of weak contact, somebody that's going to be very efficient and be able to pitch deep into games. That's Max Freed. That's the Max Freed that we know, and it's not somebody that's going to throw 96-97 but it's somebody that's going to be able to locate his pitches, keep hitters off balance, get that weak contact. And because of that, he is going to have games where some of that contact is just going to find holes. But for the majority of his starts, he's going to get weak enough contact that it's going to be outs as long as you got a good defense playing behind him. Some days that happens for the Braves. Some days it doesn't right now. But either way, that start was exactly what we needed to see from Max Freed. I kind of liked his comment after the game. He said he needed to get back to what he does, and that is mixing up speeds, keeping hitters off balance, exactly what we've come to expect from him. Look, who knows? It's a contract year. Max Freed is human. He is proven enough at this point in my mind to show that he's one of the best pitchers in the game, but he's coming off an injury-filled season, and now he's coming into a contract year. I'm sure he had a lot of pressure on himself to get off to a good start, to have a great season, you know, whether that was to impress the Braves enough that he's healthy and that he's still a top pitcher to earn a contract with them or to go out and prove it for other teams as well that could be bidding for his services this offseason. Again, I, I think there's 
a little bit of Max Freed that was coming out of this season kind of juiced. He was throwing a lot harder than we were used to seeing. That's not the Max Freed that we know. So hopefully this was kind of just a blip on the radar and he has figured some things out. He's gotten back to the Max Freed that I think when he's pitching like he's capable and he's healthy, I think he's a top 15, push, maybe pushing him in top 10 pitcher in all of baseball, especially with all the injuries that are in the game right now. I think you could put him up there in the top 10. Again, if he gets on track and becomes that pitcher that we're used to seeing, I will say the start comes with a caveat. It was the Marlins, who are one of the worst offenses in the league. And going back, and I did watch the game again, just kind of watch Max Freed's outings, I didn't think he was particularly sharp, at least compared to his standards. Now, the fastball command got better as the outing went on, but I really didn't even think that was the best game for Max Freed. So you can look at that one in two ways. He's still just not quite there, or there's best is still yet to come. He's still getting back to that that place, and I think that's going to be more of the case with Max Freed. I think you know how how rough his first two outings were. The first one didn't even get out of the first inning. Second one gave up six runs in the first inning. He did settle in after that, but was kind of just from the, the jump, you know, just really taken out of it. And now we've seen a game where he's able to work deep. He's able to kind of get going with his pitches. I like that he went back to fastball curveball. He talked about that as well, focusing on those two pitches. The curveball, in my opinion, has always been his money pitch. It's great that he can mix in these other pitches and it makes him that much more difficult, but that curveball is always what's made him so special. So a good start there. Want to see him do it again. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the episode as we preview the Astros. And then we got to talk about Marcelo Zuna. We discussed him a lot on the postcast, me and Grant McCauley, that we did Sunday night. If you want to go check that out, he is tied for the league lead in home runs with seven. He is at the top of the league in RBI with 21. And going back to the home runs, I feel like he is feet away from having two or three more home runs this year. In fact, probably some of the balls that he's hit are gone. The home run he had or the, the ball he had against the Mets in the last game of that series that I thought was gone, caught at the wall, is probably gone uh, once the weather warms up a little bit. He has been on an unbelievable start, and it continues over from what we saw last year. Look, I'm questioning myself, and I've, I've said that I expect some regression from Marcelo Zuna this year, not regression to the point that he was before 2023, where he was just a complete failure in the lineup, but somewhere more to a 250, 260, 30 home run type of guy, which is what I kind of expected from Ozuna when the Braves signed that deal. But you look at his past 139 games now, and I'll keep track of this as we go through the month of April where things really turned around for him last year. But his last 139 games, going back to the start of last May, he is slashing 303, 369, 615, a 160 WRC plus, a 984 OPS, 30 doubles, 44 home runs, 90 runs scored, 115 RBI, a 9.1% walk rate, and just a 21.8% strikeout rate. That's MVP type stuff we are talking about with Marcelo Zuna. I mean, since last May, he has been a top 10, at least top 15 hitter in all of baseball. <laughs> I mean, it's a large sample size now we'll see what happens the rest of the year but he has really really turned around his his career signs for life from ronald acuna jr over the weekend five hits just two walks just one strikeout which you like to see with all the strikeouts early on three stolen bases three runs continues to get it done with his legs on the bases came feet away from hitting his first home run and almost knocked a hole in the wall he had exit velocities of 98.2 91.1 .1, 106 113.2, 95.3, 108.2, 101.8 on the weekend. Overall, it was an 89.9 average mile per hour exit velocity, but that was brought down by a 43 mile per hour exit velocity and a 66.7 mile per hour exit velocity that he had on Sunday. But you're starting to see more hard hit baseballs. He got his first barrel of the year over the weekend. I feel like he's getting really, really close. Uh, quickly on a couple other pitchers, Chris Sale. I thought he pitched much better than the line will actually tell you. Seven innings, six hits, three walks, five earned, seven strikeouts, 102 pitches. Being able to go seven innings was huge, saving that bullpen. Only four hard hit balls allowed in the game, so it's not like he was getting lit up. The walks in the fifth inning are really what cost him after a weak two-out hit from a rise. Maybe Ozzie Albee should have caught that ball in the air. Either way, a rise gets one of his special 
weak hits, and then a walk to Bell. I think he was frustrated by a pitch in that at bat that was borderline one of those 50-50 calls that carried over into the next at bat where there were definitely two pitches that were strikes that didn't go his way. Next thing you know, base is loaded, and then he leaves a changeup, middle of the plate, to De La Cruz, who was killing the Braves in this series, and he clears the bases. So it was really just that fifth inning, the walks, and then the hanging changeup to De La Cruz that really did Chris sell in on other what otherwise I thought was a really well-pitched game from him. Same way they had a game plan early against him, kind of looking fastball slider, and he started to go to that changeup a little bit more, and it was a really good pitch for him. Overall, he had 16 whiffs. He did have 10 on the slider, which he threw most of the time, but four of eight uh, whiffs on eight on the eight swings against his changeup. Again, that became a really good pitch for him in this one. All right, next, I want to get into Charlie Morton. Talk about another rough outing for him, and my worry meter for Charlie o. Morton, Charlie Morton is up right now, and a lot of it has to do with his curveball, which is not looking as special as it has in previous years. We'll discuss that next. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. If you're not on that fast and furious team and you're like me with the minivan, they got parts for you too because they have over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp and bring home that win keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers we've all been there Either as a player or a fan, it's halftime and the scoreboard's not looking so good. You're feeling low, not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a monopoly you love, but on your phone with any time with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmark with a wrecking ball. Charge other players for rent from our, on iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. It's Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern to hear who the local locked-on experts are picking for every NFL franchise. With live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle, the locked-on NFL mock draft on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. And just real quickly here on Locked On Braves, tomorrow we'll be obviously recapping Monday's game and we'll be discussing exactly where your worry meter should be for the starting rotation. All right, let's jump into our Miners Monday segment here. Uh, before we do that, I want to talk about Charlie Morton before we move on to Miners Monday. Charlie Morton on Sunday, five and two thirds innings, seven hits, one walk, six earned, eight strikeouts, one home run on 79 pitches. This is one of the most bizarre lines I've seen from a starting pitcher. Only threw 79 pitches, only walked one batter, had eight strikeouts, only had six hard hit balls against, 89.8 mile per hour exit, exit velocity. All of those things are telling me that Charlie Morton should have had a great start, but he didn't. He gave up six earned runs on seven hits. It's a line you look at that just doesn't add up. Maybe it's a little bit of bad luck, but the bottom line is he's got to be better. I mean, I give Chris Sale 
more grace than I do Charlie Morton for what he did on Sunday against that Marlins lineup with a big lead that you had. That has to be a stress free win. You got to have your veteran go out there and give you five or six innings of two, three runs, you know, at most against this Marlins lineup, which was looked like one of the worst lineups in baseball coming in. And I still think is, but they look like one of the best lineups against Charlie Morton on Sunday. Again, it's just really, really strange. I think the Marlins had a pretty good game plan against him. It looks like they were hunting that curveball early. And Charlie Morton's throwing that cur curveball in the zone a lot more this season. He's not getting as many chases, which I'll talk about more here in a second. But at bottom line, Charlie Morton's not pitching like Charlie Morton. I, I expect him to be a, a number three type of pitcher. But he's pitching more like a number five right now at the moment. And the Braves can't have that with Spencer Strider out. They need him to pitch like a number three starter. And that's not what you're getting from Charlie Morton at the moment. And here's the thing that concerns me the most right now with Charlie Morton. It's the reason why I, you know, I'm not worried. I was never worried about Max Freed. I don't really even worry about Chris Sale. And I'm not completely worried about Renato Lopez. I don't think he's going to go six innings, one under less every time out. There's certainly going to be some regression there for him, but I think he'll be a fine, you know, five, maybe five plus type of guy. But the reason I'm more worried about Charlie Morton than any of the rest of them, his curveball is not as effective as we've seen in the past. And that's a pitch that he has to have. And you look at Sunday's outing, six whiffs on 21 swings on the curveball. That's a 29% whiff rate. That's not terrible, but it's only 26.8% on the year. The previous three years, he's had at least a 40% whiff rate on that curveball. And right now it's sitting at 27% this year. Last year, that pitch had a positive run value of 25. That was tops in all of baseball among pitchers who threw enough curveballs to qualify. That was three points ahead of NL Cy Young winner, Blake Snell. Right now, it has a positive run value of one. So, I mean, it's still been a, a good pitch for him, but it is nothing like it was in the previous seasons. He's throwing that curveball, as I said earlier, in the zone more than he has in a long time. Hitters are swinging at it out of the zone, the fewest amount they have since 2009. Hitters are chasing that pitch just 25% of the time. Again, his lowest mark since 2009. If that pitch is not effective for Charlie Morton anymore, and it, I'm not saying it's not completely ineffective, but it's not as effective as, we, as we've seen with Charlie Morton the past three years, I'm not sure what to expect from Charlie Morton this year. That has to be a pitch for him that he's getting swings and misses on, that he's getting chases on. And we just haven't seen that so far this year. This is where I do have to remind you it is a small sample size, but that is certainly something to watch for Charlie Morton. If he is not getting the chases off the plate with that curveball, I'm really worried about just how good and how effective Charlie Morton can be. But we'll see. I mean, again, it is early in the past. Tell us that that, thing, that, that should even out, but that's something to keep an eye on as you watch Charlie Morton start. Can that curveball get back to a at least 35 plus whiff rate? Is he getting more swings and misses on that curveball? Of course, a lot of that has to do with him setting it up, you know, with the with the fastball command. But one walk on Sunday against the Marlins, I would have told you he went five and six innings, giving up probably two earned or less. But it just wasn't the case. And he couldn't get it done on Sunday. And the Raves had to pull out the heroics late to win that game. All right, now getting into our Miners Monday segment. I'll be quite honest, not a lot of highlights on the farm this past week. We'll start by looking at the top prospects. A.J. smith Shopper and Hurston Waldrop have gotten off to some rough starts. A.J. smith Shopper this past week, two and a third innings, four hits, one walk, three earned, did get five strikeouts, gave up one homer. Waldrop, four and a third innings, four hits, four walks, three earned, and three strikeouts. It's unfortunate, too, because you feel like if one of those guys – got off to a hot start with the injury to Spencer Strider, that maybe they'd get an opportunity pretty soon. But with the rough starts they're out to, they're going to have to string together a lot of quality starts just to get back in that conversation as the next man up. They're obviously behind the three guys that we are likely to see, two we've already seen in, in um, Allen Winans and Darius Vines, and Bryce Elder, I would figure, is going to get an opportunity at some point. So 
they got a lot of work to do to catch up there. Somebody that's already looking really good, and I don't know how long they can keep him at Rome, but Spencer Schwellenbach, five and a third innings, just two hits, one walk, no earn, and four strikeouts. He's been really good in his first two starts. Owen Murphy has been really good in his first couple of starts as well. This past week, five and a third, four hits, did walk three, one earned, but eight strikeouts, 16 strikeouts in 12 innings so far. And that's a bit surprising for me. And I watch Owen Murphy. I don't see a big strikeout guy, but at least in two starts this year, he has definitely racked them up. Nacho Alvarez, five for 19, six walks, six strikeouts, three stolen bases this past week. Still didn't have an extra base hit this past week. I don't think he has one on the year yet. That is certainly something to keep an eye on with Nacho this year. Look, if he can stay at shortstop, the power, I guess, isn't as big of a deal. But would love to see him, obviously, tap into that extra base potential. Cade Keeler had four innings, three hits, one walk, no earned, seven strikeouts. He's looked really good, a prospect that I'm not nearly as high on, but he has looked really good in his professional debut. Drew Hackenberg didn't pitch this past week. I don't know why. He had a really good start his first time out. Hopefully nothing wrong there. Now going through at each level, Gwinnett, Lurie Garcia, 10 for 26 this past week, three doubles and a home run. J.P. Martinez remains red hot, 8 for 22, a double, a triple, two walks, just two strikeouts and four stolen bases. David Fletcher, 8 for 23 with five walks, getting on base a ton. Only one Gwinnett pitcher had a whip under 1.20 last week. Rough week for the pitching staff. That was Jake Walsh, who pitched two scoreless innings, allowed just a one hit, but didn't strike out anybody. So not a lot to talk about there on the pitching at Gwinnett this past week. Mississippi, Cody Milligan was five for 18, a double, a triple, three walks, five stolen bases. J.J. Necro started two games, 10 and two-thirds innings, seven hits, two walks, two earned, and eight strikeouts. Jake McSteen, pretty cool name there, six Ks and three and a third innings. Ian Mejia, six innings, three hits, one walk, no earned, and four strikeouts. And then finally, Drew Parrish, five innings, six hits, one walk, one earned, and three strikeouts. Moving down to Rome, Adam Zabrowski, five, four for 12, two walks. He was the only Rome player with an OPS over 700 this past week. As bad as the Gwinnett pitching was, the Rome offense was just as bad. My guy Sabine Ceballos did have four hits and two walks on the week. And Bioris Tavares, strikeout rate is currently at 56.5% through six games. Looking for that improvement for him at the plate. Haven't seen it so far, but it is early on. Lucas Braun at Rome, five innings, five hits, four walks. Don't love that. Two earned and five strikeouts. Ryan Barasa, hopefully I'm saying that right. Three innings, no hits, one walk, no earned, and four strikeouts. And then lastly, at Augusta, Cade Kern, five for 15, a double, a homer, two walks, two stolen bases. Drew Compton, six for 18, three doubles and three walks. Jace Grady, six for 21, two doubles, a home run, a walk, and a stolen base. And then on the pitching side, Mitch Ferris, Four innings, three hits, no walks, no earn, seven strikeouts. Adam Mayer, his first two professional outings, he's been pretty good. Five innings this past week, two hits, no walks. Did hit a couple batters, no earn runs, and six strikeouts. And then Garrett Bauman, he is looking really good. Big, tall righty that the Braves drafted last year. Five and two-thirds innings, just one hit, one walk. Did still somehow give up two earn runs and three strikeouts. So he's off to a good season in 2024. So that is your minor league update for the week. Things happening down on the farm. All right, next we'll get into the little bit of news, including the Spencer Strider update, and then we'll preview the Houston Astros. We'll do all of that here next. Today's episode is sponsored by Yahoo Finance. Would it be great if you could see all your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need all in one place. Securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. For a comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand new behind every great or visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. The number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Again, that's yahoofinance.com. 
Apologize to those watching on YouTube as I seem to have lost connection to my camera, but we'll continue on here today because I want to talk about the Spencer Strider news. He elected to have internal brace surgery on that UCL. Still will miss the rest of the 2024 season, but he hopes to be back sooner in 2025. That's the difference between doing it this way and having full on Tommy John, which would be his second. So hopefully this is successful. We've seen more guys kind of go this route. Again, hopefully it gets Spencer Strider back earlier in 2025. He's still done for 2024, and the Braves are going to have to find somebody to fill that spot in the rotation. But hopefully this does get him back sooner rather than later. Braves did sign Yuli Gurriel to a minor league contract. Gets the Braves some more depth. Veteran hitter there. Uh, should be some great depth for the Atlanta Braves if they need him. Now, previewing the Houston Astros coming up. we got a three-game series with them in Houston they got off to a bit of a slow start this year, but they seem to wake up over the weekend against their rival, the Texas Rangers, obviously the defending World Series champions. They won two out of three in that series. Looking at the pitching matchups, it's Darius Vine versus Spencer Arigetti, and then Ronaldo Lopez versus Hunter Brown, and Max Fried versus J.P. France. Now the Braves decided to go with Darius Vines on Monday. He didn't pitch at all over the weekend. Bryce Elder was scratched for most Saturday and Sunday, so I thought maybe the Braves were going to give him the start on Monday. Maybe they were just going to scratch him in case they had to use Darius Vines, and then they were going to call him up. So we'll see what happens there with Bryce Elder. I would expect he's going to pitch on Tuesday for Gwinnett if he's is healthy, and then that would set him up to come up over the weekend if they want to. Look, I, I talked about this already, though. Maybe there's just the, the fact that the Braves don't trust him as much now, and they'd rather give – Vines and and Winans a start over Bryce Selder. I mean, that is very possible. That seems kind of hard to believe that he would have fallen that far in the Braves' eyes. You look at the stuff plus models for Bryce Selder. If you listen to Eno Saris and the podcast that he does on The Athletic, and he talked about the fact that the stuff numbers were up for Bryce Selder in spring training. So we'll see what happens there. It may just be a timing thing. Wanting to go ahead and just give Darius Vines an outing since he is already up here and not waste that option. But again, if, if Bryce Selder were to pitch on Tuesday, he got the off day on Thursday. You know, he could be a, he can be available later in the week if the Braves need him there. But it is going to be Darius Vines on Monday. He's got a good cutter changeup combination that works well with him. I was impressed by what I saw from him last year. As for Eric Getty, made his first major league start last time out, gave up seven earned in three innings. So hopefully the Braves are able to get to him. And then as for Lopez, can he keep it going? You know, six innings, one earned or less, his first two starts. Like I said earlier, not expecting that every time out. He's going up against a, a good lineup in the Astros. But Hunter Brown gave up nine earned on 11 hits in just two-thirds of an inning his last time out. Hopefully the Braves can do something similar to him on Tuesday. And then in the finale, which will be an afternoon game on Wednesday, it's Max Freed versus J.P. France. I talked about Max Freed, seeing him you know, take some more steps in the good, right direction, but it was against the Marlins. Want to see him do it against this Astros lineup, see if he can continue to gain command of all of his pitches, be able to mix them up, keep hitters off balance like we're used to seeing with Max Freed. But it's an opportunity here. Look, the Astros have an all-star squad on the injured list right now for their rotation. This is a, a chance to get this Astros team while they're down a little bit. And you got the pitching, I think, to get it done, especially with Lopez and Max Freed. If they can continue to do what they've done this year, at least Freed for his last outing, if he can do what he's done for his career, really like the Braves' chances to get another series win here, even against a good Astros team in Houston. Looks like an opportunity for the Braves to pick up a couple of more wins. I want to remind you that Locked On's launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's now also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Tomorrow, we'll take a look at the starting rotation and discuss exactly where the panic meter should be for the Braves starting rotation. We'll do all that on Tuesday's episode. But that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Thanks so much for listening. Sorry for the technical difficulties here at the end, but hopefully you enjoyed the show. If you do, get that hit that subscribe button or that thumbs up button on your YouTube. Make sure that you follow us on social media at shortstopball at lockdown underscore Braves 
and make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.